Welcome, welcome, welcome to Basketball Heads Live. I'm your host, Glenn Poole Hardy. And tonight, we have a very special guest. This Basketball Heads credo has always been hard work. As a point guard at Linda Hurst High School, he wasn't a star, but conditioning workouts helped him earn a basketball scholarship to Southern Connecticut State University in New Haven. For all the young people out there, just remember, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. After college, this basketball head put himself in a position to get a tryout with the Charlotte Hornets in 1998. But he was cut. And this changed everything. So, in 1999, he turned his passion for basketball into a career of training, high school, college, and pro athletes throughout the country. Started from the ground up, now on his way to building an empire. Over the years, he has been the go-to guy for players like Paul George, Trevor Ariza, Danny Green, Lance Stevenson, Tasha Harris, Andre Barrett, Jeanette Jonathan, and Mike James, just to name a few. Without further ado, Help me welcome to the show, Linda Hurst High School and Southern Connecticut State standout and now CEO of JP1, the elite pro trainer, Jerry Powell. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Yes. 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 You have you just stepped out into, into the into world, world of chaos, chaos. Where, where everybody, everybody goes, goes hard. hard. Come on, come on, go hard. Tickets because the game about to start. What's going on, man? How you doing? Pretty good, pretty good. Good, can you bring the phone down a little bit so everybody can see? There you go. Cool. How's it going? Glad to have you on the show, my brother. I appreciate it. I'm glad you invited me on your show. Nah, listen, bro, it's, it's been in the working for a while, man. Your name has come up on a lot of conversations, so this is only right, man. We make this happen. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. You guys, no I, doubt. I mean, I like, I like, you know, the way you guys are doing everything on the, on the podcast because it's, it's, it's very authentic and it's not, it's not like you're doing it for relevancy. You're doing it because you really love the game. <clears throat> and I, I'm from, I'm from that era, man. I'm from that era. I was coached by the legendary Bobby Hartstein and Lincoln. So I'm, I'm coming from that cloth, man. So I love the game. Um, it's fortunate, unfortunate, a lot of our basketball heads has passed away during these tough times. Right. And they never really got to tell their story. Right. So we want to kind of get the guys who are still here their shine. I like you, my brother. I appreciate it. I definitely appreciate it. For sure. So who introduced you to the game? Mr. Nick. You do you remember Mr. Nick? Who's that? Nick Nicolosi used to run Elmcore. Oh, okay, wow. Yeah. Mr. Nick. You going back. Mr. Nick, uh Mr. Nick. Yeah, Mr. Nick. Definitely. And you grew up in grew up in Long Island or Queens? No, I'm originally I'm originally from Harlem. And I grew, I, but I, I I moved from Harlem to Long Island because I was in a, you know, I was, my mom had me when she was very young and I needed a lot of discipline. So my mom's, and my, really my grandmother talked my mom's into letting me go into the system, not because of <clears throat> child abuse or anything. It's just that my mom was too young to be raising me. You know what I mean? Most kids you go, 
they go to the system because they're in trouble or yeah. they, their mom was on drugs and stuff like that. My mom's wasn't on drugs or nothing like that. It's just that my mom's had me young and wasn't able to take care of me because, you know, it's a kid having a kid. But, yeah. you know. Yeah, man, it's tough times, man. And look, brother, it, you are an uh, inspiration for kids, right? Because um, I teach and, and Medine at a high school where a lot of kids are displaced, you right. know? And I just let them know your life is not going to stop here. Right. You know, so you're definitely an inspiration, brother. Appreciate you. I definitely appreciate you. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, I just... So, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. No, nah, I just... I'm just, I, I mean, I don't, I'm, I'm, I don't know. Go ahead, I'll, I, I'll let you go. All right, cool, cool. So, do you remember your first game, and how was it? How was that feeling, right? That adrenaline rush for your first basketball game. Well, my first basketball game. Well, I kind of went to a school where basketball wasn't the number one sport. It was a football school for high school wise, and you know. And I didn't meet Mr. Nick early at an early age. I met Mr. Nick like, excuse me, ninth grade, I'm sorry, 10th grade year. I met Mr. Nick because Mr. Nick used to come to all all the gyms in Long Island because he moved from from Queens to, mm. to Long Island. Right. And Mr. Nick used to, you know, used to come by the practices and sit and watch. And anybody that wanted to stay with him, stay late or work out with him and stuff like that so you know my coach would let him do things with us and at that time he was pretty he was pretty old but he's he's uh what 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 drew me to mr nick is you know how sometimes people will get old and they're stuck in their own ways but mr. right nick, right but mr nick always kept up with the times like he always kept up with the different the different styles of the games and stuff like that he kept up with the style whatever style there was he kept up with it he was always like 20 years ahead of his time you know just wow. by just by listening to him and he wasn't a drill guy he was a he was a, he was very technical and very concept concept he believed in concepts rhythm and he wasn't a drill guy he didn't like drills and i remember him in uh so he definitely didn't like drills and he's like a very like he's like a technician you know what i mean who's you know right does the little things that make them that little that little thing make it a big thing but going back to your question my first game i sucked so i wasn't i wasn't good you know what i mean i wasn't i wasn't good it was a it was a it was a culture shock for me coming from Harlem. you know you can get into so many things at home long island is nothing but sports. You can't do anything else because if you do something else, it's boring. You're going to get in trouble. You know what I mean? It's nothing else to do because it's that boring at those times unless you're playing some type of sport like baseball, soccer, lacrosse, and a lot of grass. There's a lot of space, football with your friends and stuff like that, Little League football. So, you know, I was in, I, you know, I went to a family that was very sports sports and um into sports and our poster pops put me in everything you know football basketball everything so with that being said i just started liking basketball when the, my first time i loved basketball my first game i watched a basketball game was when i saw the nuggets and the pistons with that 183 game and that yes. and that's when i fell in love with basketball i fell in love yes. I I I want to I want to just take this time out to say, brother, great game. How many three pointers did they shoot? I don't even remember, but I just remember everybody on both teams, five guys having thirty, four, yeah. and it was just up and down. Nobody was really playing no D. Kiki Vandaway was nice, and at that yeah. time, you didn't see. I was English. I was English. Woo. Yes, and then I was like, yo, and then I started liking the Nuggets. You know what I mean? Just because, you know, they just they just were scoring like T.R. Dunn, Mike Evans, Bill Hanslick, Dan Issel. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? And then you know I did love Isaiah too. 
I'm not going yeah. to love Isaiah, but Alex English is just so smooth. And I, yeah. I just, I just, I, I fell in love from that 1983 is when I fell in love with basketball. Wow. That's crazy. And I never, I never, I, I just, I just love, I just think, I think basketball is beautiful when you can play. It's a beautiful sport yeah. when you can play. It's a beautiful sport when you can play. And 1983, special year. Yes. Freshman year at Lincoln. Now, I went to Lincoln to play football. Right. Made varsity by some chance, freshman year. And that's when I really started to get into basketball like that. The first basketball game I watched was Philadelphia 76ers versus the Los Angeles Lakers when Magic first came. Right. But I didn't watch any more games after that. The next game I watched after that was uh, the Michael jo Georgetown versus North Carolina. Right. And then after I made the team, I started watching basketball after that. But 83 was that year. Yes. That, 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 I mean, that's when I started loving basketball. And I just wasn't in, in middle school. Back then, 83, I was like in the seventh grade. So, and I made the middle school team. And I used to, I was quick, but I didn't understand how to play. You know what I mean? I didn't know. I didn't understand. I, I just knew I was fast and I would get steals and miss the whole everything. And then, and then I just got, I got frustrated. I was like, yo, I'm fast. I'm getting all these steals. And I'm not getting no points. You know what I mean? So I, I started saying, I got to work on, I got to work on things. And I would go in the backyard and shoot for hours. And then my pops introduced uh, my coach, high school coach, John Albano introduced me to Mr. Nick. And and um, the rest was that changed everything. Yes. Wow, wow. So you went to Lindenhurst High School, huh? Yes. In, yep. How was that? It was a, it and the transitions and the transitions you had to make because okay. kids need to hear this. It was it was a culture shock, first of all, because you're going to school with a bunch of white kids. So at at one point, you know what I mean. You 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 tried to. I almost felt like. <clears throat> I almost felt like. I had to act like them to fit in. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? And then it was just like you know. And then there was some. And then don't get me wrong. I got to know them. You know what I mean? I got to know how they are, and and I got and I was schooled by my foster father who taught me how they operate. So that way, when there's an incident or something happens, you got to take the emotion out because anything you do emotionally, it always comes out wrong. You yes. know what I'm saying? So I had to learn to take the emotion out and, you know, and it was back then it was, you know, you walk to school, and you ride, it wasn't as bad as, I'm not talking about the 60s, but it was like, you know, you black. And I was one of 15 guys in the school, a blacks in the school, in the whole entire school district. Woo! You know I mean? So, and you just had to, you had to just, yeah, it, it was a lot of stuff going on that you tried to ignore but you really couldn't. You knew it existed, but you got it. You just, you just, it was, if I had to do it again, I would do it again because I feel like now that I had that experience, I feel like I'm an enigma because I was brought up on both sides of the spectrum. So I know how to deal with both sides. You know what I mean? And, you know, so from that standpoint, it helped me because I did need a discipline. I had no discipline. I do what I wanted to do. When I when I lived with my real moms, you know what I mean. I did, I did whatever I wanted to do, basically, you know what I mean. And I was bad, you know what I mean. But I was bad, and it wasn't her fault. It was just I was just bad because, you know, I'm I'm from Harlem. You know what I'm saying. I'm I love Harlem. You know what I mean. I used to want to go home for the block parties, and as I got older, and every time I went home, all my friends was dying and stuff. So that was like yo. Maybe that could have easily been me. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying that to myself on the, on the train. You know what I mean? Because, and then you sad, and then you, you know, that you lost your one of your buddies. 
And then you like, you know, that could have easily been you. And that's so real, man. I, and kids go through that. And yeah. A lot of times they don't have anyone to talk to. And it's sometimes it's confusing to them because they go, oh, well, everybody else on the block. I just might as well go out on the block, too. Right. And then they, they're hooked to the block. Yeah, so I, wasn't, thing, I wasn't. You know, I you made that right decision. I wasn't getting into that. I wasn't, I wasn't like getting into that, but I was getting into things like I was always hanging out with the older guys and trying to prove to them that I'm down with them. And then when mm. I went to, when I went to, when I went to Long Island, I'm eating dinner at six o'clock. When I was in Harlem, I ain't thinking about no dinner. You know what I'm saying? I'm eating. We're talking about what we did in school. It's, you know, it's just, it's, it's structure. You know what I mean? It was just structure. And so, and I needed that and it helped me, you know, overcome. I think to be honest with you, you know, I think my mom, she's not here right now. She, you know, she died. But if it wasn't for my mother putting me in that situation, because a lot of people got egos and the ego yes. is the worst thing to have because what the ego does, it'll have you thinking you got it all together and you don't need nobody until you hit rock bottom. And then now you got to humble yourself when if you would have humbled yourself from the very beginning, you wouldn't be in the predicament that you're in from the ego standpoint. That's real, man. That's real. So you, you get the uh, Linda Hurst. What year did you try for the team? I got to Linda Hurst. I've been living in Linda Hurst since I was, I, I moved to Long Island since 1979. I've been there since I was 11. And then I, I, you know, I went to junior high and I wasn't good. You know what I mean? I wasn't good. I wasn't good in eighth grade. Wasn't good. I was a good football player. I was decent. You know what I mean? Because I ain't going to lie. I used to think I was Jamal Holloway from Oklahoma. <laughs> as soon as, and then back then, I could always say to myself that I was the original quarterback because back then they wasn't letting no black kids play quarterback. You know what I mean? And then we, I think they let me do it because we was running the wishbone offense. You know what I'm saying? So it was cool. And then- Yo, just, fam, you saying this, I'm going, damn, I played quarterback too. Yeah. That's what I went to Lincoln in the play. I was, I was the quarterback. See, but they were- crazy. Lincoln, at Lincoln, they let you play quarterback. I mean, you know? Huh? They would let you play quarterback at Lincoln. Oh, they, yeah, they, yeah, at the time, you know, right, right. But, but, but again, yeah, you know, I gave it all. I gave it all up. Right, but I'm gonna tell you why. It I was junior varsity up. football for varsity I, basketball. So I was, I was like, I'm gonna tell you why I gave up football. You know, I played against a team called the Massapequa Mustangs. It was the Super Bowl, and I was I was moving. You know what I mean? I was I was doing my thing, doing my ones and twos, hitting moves. Man, listen, if somebody hit me, and I was on the floor for a while stars stings everything and then i let i when i was laying there looking at the sky i said this is my last year <laughs> that's why i said i said this is my last year this is my last year and that's when i went to basketball and then i got better i didn't start getting better to, in basketball until my junior year Mm. Junior year going into my senior year. And then I went to, I started, my coach John Albano took me to this camp. This is when I fell in love with working out. He took me to this camp, Providence camp. When Providence, Providence won. And remember the, that time of Big East had three, 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 uh, three teams in the final, in the final four? four? I, yeah. went to, I went to Providence camp when Billy Donovan was there. Cause I looked up to Billy Donovan because he's from Long Island. You know what I mean? Yo, hold on, fam. Let, I gotta do this real quick, <laughs> and then y'all understand why I'm doing it, fam. Yo, yo, Billy Donovan is the most mentioned name on this show from other players. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna tell you something. Hold on. My friend is older than me because Billy's older than me. So there used to be a summer league in Rockville Center. My friend, Sean Ramos, 
my friend Sean Ramos took me to the game and I said, Sean, we're getting on the train now. I mm -hmm. said, Sean, he's nice. I'm telling you. Nah, he looked like Opie from Andy Griffin. You remember <laughs> Andy Griffin? You remember that TV show? Andy Griffin? Yeah. And I said, yo, listen, don't sleep. I'm telling you. Oh, come on. Come on, Jerry. I said, I'm telling you, man. His in and out cross is so wicked. You know what I mean? And I he's and I say he's he's I said he's not quick. He's very crafty. Very crafty. Mm. And he could shoot off the dribble. He played Billy plays slow fast naturally. So I was like, yo, Sean, be ready because he's gonna seem like he's not going nowhere and he's gonna leave you. Billy gave him 34. <laughs> Billy tough, man. Billy tough. Billy, Billy, yes. Billy was tough, man. Billy, Billy was tough, man. I went against a man. Listen, man. A lot of people sleep. I played against some nice white boys, man. There's some nice Yo, white boys out there. I'm telling you, man. John Johnson said when he ran up against Billy, he didn't know what to expect. After the game, he was like, this dude gave me a 40 piece. And I'm like one of the top guards in the whole New York State. Yes. Yes, because you know what it is? He got baby fat. He 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 don't even look. He's he doesn't pass the eye test. He don't pass the eye test. So when you see him, you're like, well, man, come on, please. But when that ball goes up and he get that ball, good night. He's tough, man. Wow. He's tough. Speaking of nice white guys, I got one on to uh Wednesday. Cal Macaloni. Nice. Another one. Worked out on his yeah. own. Tough. Fast. Tough. Woo! This Tough. this is good. This is getting good, man. Tough. Listen, the first time I heard about uh Southern Connecticut State University was when Paris Smith from EPMD used to shout that school out. Yes, he, yes, he was and I used to always be like, "What the hell is SCSU?" Yes, and we didn't have Google. There was no Google. We yes. didn't. There was, but the fact that he said it, it just it made it stand out. Par Paris. And I never forgot it till to this day. Paris, 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 nice in football. He played football there. That's it. That's yeah. right. He's nice in football. Yeah, yeah. Paris, Paris, wow. Paris is a big boy. He he doesn't he looks small on TV. Paris, no, nah, he about he about six four. He about yes. six four. Yeah, yes. Six, yeah, yes, yes. That's man. crazy. So now you said you got a scholarship there on your workout skills alone. Yeah, Tell me about that. What happened was they the coaches came to the park to play. The coaches was there for a wedding. You know what I mean? Because I didn't have nothing coming out of high school. Mike, I'm not one of these guys that's lying. And he told me, he, he liked me. He told me, if I outplay the kids who are already there, they'll give me, they'll give me a ride. They'll call me upstairs. And that, you can't get no fair. That's fair. Fair. No, that's fair. That, that is fair. So I went home. I told my dad. We got, took the car to the ferry. They put the car on the ferry. Take the ferry. The Bayshore Ferry crossed to Connecticut. Get out and drove. And I played very well. I played hard. I played, he told me, you know, play like your life's depending on. That's what I did. Mm. Yeah. Listen. Kids need to hear this because when opportunity knocks, like Eminem said, you only get one chance to blow. Right. Right? I, I you get the opportunity and look, everything's on the table at this point. No other school is knocking. I get a chance here. My school is paid for. You know, My another education thing, another will be worth thing, it. Another thing kids fail to realize, a lot of kids are so stuck on D1, 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 D1. I played against some D2 guys that'll give kids. I played against D2 guys that had longer pro careers than Division One guys. Tell it. Talk it. We talk right. about it all the time. Right. I'm from that era where a lot of us were stuck on D1, D1. Yo, and played, we were choosing the school, yo, right? Yo, first of all, first of all, to be honest with you, I like all the Brooklyn guards. Every I've never seen, I've never seen me and me coming up. I've never seen not one. I can't say there's one Brooklyn guard that's a bum. 
Mm. You can't say that. You can't. You can't say that. Like in college, Lamont Jones was super nice. Ridiculous with it. Super nice. Yeah. Could have played in the Big East easy. He could have played. He could have played in the Big East and made. I would say, hypothetically speaking, maybe first team, second team all yep. Big East. Yeah. Very crafty. No, and these guys know how to play. Like Lamont Jones, Lambert Shell, Bridgeport, that whole Bridgeport team knew how to play. Guys on Bet Bentley, that team that they knew how to play. Caboose Stewart, Tyrone Davis, those guys know how to play. I played against Ty those guys. Davis, my God. Yes. That guy for sure. The, that guy, Tyrone Davis, had the best stop and go I ever seen. <laughs> Yes. Ever yes. seen. At 6'4. Point yes. guard. Big. And but they know how to play. What are you gonna do with a guy who's talented and knows how to play? It's tough. They know how to play. Tough. At least a lot of kids nowadays don't know how to play. I'm talking about IQ. Yes. No Speedy Claxton said that. Speedy, Speedy Claxton said the same thing. They don't know how to play. So a lot of guys who are working these kids out are not teaching them how to play. What they're doing is they're just putting them through drills. But at the end of the day, these drills that you're teaching them have to have a concept. It has to have a game concept. Because if you don't put them in a game concept, then it's not going to be familiar. Because there's a lot of kids who know how to do drills but still don't know how to play. Listen, I have one in my school. He was the best Kid, you wanted to work out. He went to five star. The first kid we sent to five star, local camp. But coming from not my school was a big thing. He went and got MVP of the camp just for his workouts. Now, put that in the game, it's not happening. Right, because you know why? The key to this, listen, the, the best thing you have to do when you're working kids out is you got to make it <clears> – <throat> You got to give them a game concept and you got to, if it ain't a game concept, then they're going to play. You get kids, some kids that play like they're doing drills. Okay. And you can't, you can't do that. You just can't. You got to give a kid a concept. Okay. This is the move we're trying to do. This is the contact and this is what's going to happen. And if this happens, you have this, you know what I mean? Like, for example, when I work guys out, I try to tell them, to take the line, the recovery line away. After you mm. beat your man, we're taking that line away. Because if we leave that line open, we're giving him a chance to recover. You know what I mean? You got to be able to articulate why it works, why it doesn't work. Because at the end of the day, you're not going to be on that court with that kid. He has to be able to make his own adjustments. If he can't make an adjustment mm. immediately, then you're in trouble. Me personally, wow. I've been talking about, I've been talking about a lot of uh, guards lately that I like, and and I'm gonna the guard that I like the most, and I've been watching him, studying, watching film, because maybe thinking, maybe I'm, maybe I'm crazy. The best instinctive guard I ever seen in my life is Kyrie Irving. I've never seen nobody like that in my life. Me either. No, no, I've never seen no, nobody. I, I can say that he has a counter. For everything, like he's a boxer. It's not even, and it's not even planned. He's probably the best guard of our twentieth century. He, nobody. Done I that. had, I had Larry, I had Larry Brown on here who played with his father at BU. Not Larry Brown, Larry. Oh, he's from played at Uniondale. Oh, it'll come to me. Okay. Played at BU, big, big time player from Long Island. Play with Kyrie Pops, mm -hmm. Dedrick, and BU. Right. Say, Glenn, tell you one thing I know about Kyrie. Is anything like his father? Kid is brilliant. Had Ron Strickland on here. Same thing. Because I'm going, yo, what did you do? Did you give him your skills? He said, yo, G, that kid is a beast on, on his own. Now, we gave him some things, but the things he's doing? Number one. First of all, his layup package is Hall of Fame, first ballot. His layup package.
is Hall of Fame. It's Hall of Fame. Yo, you're going to make my best friend's night. When my best friend hear this, he's never going to let me hear the end of it. He, he loved Kyrie about, from I'm, the beginning. I'm, I'm talking from Jerry Powell's, from my opinion, he is the best instinctive guard I ever seen in my entire life. Instincts in my life. Wow. When, when you when you started uh, your training services, who was your first client? When I first started my training services, it depend. My first client was a kid named the guy who gave me a shot was a guy named Harold Lamb. He had a son named Danny Lamb. And he believed in me from from day one. And then I had a kid named, I'd have to say, after that, uh, a kid named Gene Hartley. Gene is Bria Hartley's brother. Yes. Wow. So Gene and Gene's dad used to, uh, Bria Hartley's dad is a boxing coach. So when he seen me one day, he came up to me. I was working out kids in the gym. He came up to me. And Gene, he wanted me, because Gene had a hard time making the team at North Babylon. And I said, uh, I said, you know, let me, um, let me, I'm sorry, let me go back. I had, my first client was, before all of those little kids, was Mike James. And I had a guy named Gary Williams that was with me. Gary Williams, G. Will, was the one that, told me, you know, I should do this. I should do this for a living. You know, he was the one that said, no, I, and I didn't believe in myself like that. I didn't, I was like, man, it was just like a, working out was like an exercise for me. Like I go to the gym and work out. Like people go to the gym and lift weights. I go to the gym, excuse me, and work out because it did something for me. It made me feel good. Right. It made my confidence. It kept my confidence at a brisk. And, um, and, I was like, uh, you know, I just, I just wanted to be nice so bad. I wanted it so bad, and then, <laughs> and then when I, and then when I got good, I wasn't satisfied. People used to be like, "Yo, man, you, you nice, man." I said, "Nah, I'm not nice. You know why? Because I seem nice, and I ain't there. Mm. You know what I'm mm. saying? I'm not there. See, some people see, some people be like, "Oh, I'm, I'm nice, but uh, how nice are you?" Are you nice for you? Because I seen what nice is. And I yeah. wasn't there. And one thing I liked about Mr. Nick, Mr. Nick used to get mad at me. He, when he started working me out when I was in college, he would get mad at me because I would go to this park where I would dominate. And he would he would curse me out. Him and his wife. His wife would bring me tuna fish sandwich. God bless the dead. I love Mr. Nick. He would curse me out. See, I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you the truth. He would curse me out and said, this is garbage. You only want to mm. play here because you can dominate. And he said, you're not playing here no more. I'm going to take you to Jersey Shore. Listen. Please tell people right about the Jersey Shore now, now League. Listen. Now, listen. I'm down. I'm down driving with them. Now, at this time, Mr. Nick's a little older. He's gotten older. He's about 62, driving. We're in the Dodge Dart. I know you remember those, right? Yes, yes. And, 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 and he's got one seat. It ain't got no recliner. You got to climb over to get in the back. But I can't, I ain't mad because Mr. Nick, Mr. Nick drove me everywhere, didn't actually, and fed me. His wife would do the crochet. You know what I mean? Now, I, I'm, I'm black with two old white people. People are looking at me like, what is he trying to rob them? They don't know. They <laughs> damn near my parents. You know what I mean? Right. So Mr. Nick would be like, do you got his sandwiches? She packed me drinks. And then watch this. So I went down to Jersey Shore. And the guy who helped Kyrie out, he had a team. I don't know if you know Sandy. Sandy looked like Big Bird, the small version of Big Bird. He got curly hair. Yes, yes, Sandy, yes, Sandy yes. They used to have a, a program called the Road Runners. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. That's the New Jersey team, the AU right, team. Right. Yes. Sandy put me on the team 
And I'm like, come on, Mr. Nick, man. I walked in the gym. It was Sam Cassell. Yo, man. The, I was on a team with the Seton Hall kids. Uh, LeVar Sanders got in the game. Mr. Nick and his wife wouldn't sit in the bleachers. You know them old picnic tables, picnic chairs that got all the different colors and they, uh -huh, slide, uh -huh. and they slide a little bit? Him and his wife would be sitting. She'd do the crochet. And then I got in the game. The dude smacked the ball out of my hand. I'm nervous now. And now you are now i'm like i look at him he's get standing up and he starts to cursing and stuff and then i had to play man i played really good he said this is what you need i played really mm. good but i wasn't used to that level he said this is he said that stuff you do in that park is garbage don't go back there no more wow yeah mr nick helped me out a lot man he gave Salute me a couple, he gave and me a god bless mr nick yeah and his wife definitely yeah. fam yeah, he gave me a lot that's, of confidence. That's real. And he told me, he used to talk to me about ball for hours. He said, the days of the X's and O's are over. Kids are too good. They jump too high. You only need X's and O's to, to get a shot off if the game's close. Mm. You know what he told me? He told me some of the deepest, the deepest. He's one of the main reasons why I started training. Because he trained me. And towards the end, when he, when he, when he died and got, he got mad at me because I wouldn't let him be a part of what I was doing, but I had to because he cursed me out. He he would show up at my gym and stand in the middle of the floor and wouldn't get off unless I put him to work. He would stand in the middle of the court and would not get off the court and go, and you know what he'd say? The kids need Mr. Nick. They need me. Give me five minutes. He said to me, he can get a kid better in five minutes than I can in an hour. <laughs> and you know what? He was right. He's the best trainer that I ever seen in my life. Wow. My life. He could teach you shooting, dribble. He's big on rhythm. He knows he he he's 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 the best, man. I, I can't he's the best. He's the best. That's real, man. Him he's that's, that's, and that's how you give it up to the to the mentors so people see that you came from something. Yeah. Right? Yeah, he's he was the <laughs> best. And I like uh, I like Tim Gerkerich. I think Tim Gerkerich to be honest with you, he put he put it on the map because back in the day, there was no such thing as a pregame warm-up. He was the first guy to bring that on to the court. That won't, You know how you go to the, the game early and you got the yeah. guy, the guy comes out and he works out, then he goes back in? Guy's got to be at the, at the game 5.30. Tim Gerkerich is, is the guru. They, he's the guru. And he, he's, he is, in the NBA standards, he's the best. And I... The one thing I don't understand about the young trainers, it's a fraternity, man. We can't stop bad-mouthing one another. Whether one is better than the other, it's a fraternity. So I love all the trainers. Rather, I love all the respect they give me, and that's why I'm going to give them all the respect because I wish I had somebody to help me going in my training career. Because it was difficult when I first started. When I first started in 1998, handing out my cards, people would, didn't believe in it. It was foreign. People were like, "Definitely, what are you talking Definitely. about? I'll go to Def the park. And for somebody who looks like you. And yes. Because when we see trainer, we don't look at somebody that looked like us. Right. So what I did was I wanted to do something. I wanted to change the game. I wanted to do something to make it affordable for everyone. You know what I mean? Because usually when you, you got, you know, I, I don't want to play the race card, but usually when you talk a trainer, you're talking about a white guy who trains tennis players. You know what I mean? So that's, that's table talk with the rich white people. Oh, my daughter goes to Tommy Smith. You know what I mean? Because that's table talk. So for a black kid to have a trainer, we came a long goddamn way. That's what people don't understand. For people, I mean, think about it. <clears throat> Could you have said you had a trainer? You, your parents have have a hard time putting food on the table. You talking about you got a trainer? We EBT kids. EBT people don't know what that is. That's welfare. 
And then you got to understand. You got to understand. I love this. And when you love it, it comes easy to you because I think, to be honest with you, I'm gifted at it. And everyone says, oh, Jerry, you're the best. And I, I take it, but I don't let it get to my head because the day you stop, the day, the toes you step on today might be the ass you got to kiss tomorrow. So be say that again, fam. So that's so, so real. So so you got to be nice to people. You know what I mean? You can't go around being mean to people and stuff like that because at the end of the day, you got you you got to you got to show kids kids love and people love. And I'm glad that I was able to make it a business for everyone. That's what I'm glad. I, you know, instead of getting mad at me, I was like, guys are like, ah, oh, you know, I, I hear, I hear the ne what people say. Oh, why are you going all the way out there to work out with him? I could do what he do. But instead of saying, you know what? This guy provided a job for all of us. Look at it that way. You, you were doing $35 two-hour sessions. Yes. And see, that's another thing. People say my price is high. But yeah, they high <laughs> down. But they always wasn't. I've been doing this no, for 20 years. No, that's what I'm saying. They were very affordable. Yes. I was doing, I'm not supposed to get a raise. <laughs> I've been doing this. <laughs> I've been, and you've been doing this since 1998. And it's 2021. Right. So I'm not supposed to get a raise. I'm, you know what I mean? So, I mean, at the end of the day, I just, I, I love it, man. I love the best part about training to me is changing somebody's life. That's what it's about. You got you changing people's lives. And don't get me wrong, I'm very tough, but it's out of love. It's not out of oh. it's not out of Yeah. <laughs> Check this out. I got something I want to read. Go ahead. Right? Mm -hmm. I read a New York Times article that explained your training style a little, right? Mm -hmm. Say each time a player reached the far wall, they drop to the floor for a set of 10 push-ups. At Mr. Powell's command, they switched to a dribbling drill, twirling as if they were doing a chore choreographed dance across the floor while mastering control of the bouncing ball. Right. Crazy. Now, some years ago, before I even started this show, I seen a video of a young Khalil Bradley doing that a drill similar to that and he wanted to give up and you walked over to him say young man do you want to be great little Khalil junior high school looked up at you and said yes so let's, let's get it cracking then right and I'm you didn't go over and start barking at him you just asked him one simple question I know you hurting right now I know you tired right I know your body is giving out on you. Right. And but do you want to be great? And then me That was an excellent, excellent video. And me person and then my thing is this too. I've gotten so much better. Now I used to. Now everyone, if you hear most people that the older generation that work out, that used to work out with me or came through me, they'll tell you in a minute, he's crazy. But <laughs> I was. They're not lying. I was crazy. But at that time, I wasn't a good trainer because I didn't have the detail part. I was very good at, I did a lot of conditioning drills. Mm. So, and, I, and then I said, Jerry, I'm going to have to change because either one of these young boys you're going to run up on, they're going to they're gonna hurt you because you can't, you can't mother F everybody. That's right. Everybody's different. You know what I mean? Everybody's different. You can't, you can't do that. You know what I mean? You can't, um, you can't, they saying Jerry's still crazy. That's not true. <laughs> <laughs> you can't, you can't, you can't do that. The one thing I had to learn is you cannot talk to people derogatory because you're going to get a derogatory response. So you got to talk to people 
you got to explain it to them. Now, what I don't, what I do get upset about is when I know said, you curse my not yo son out. <laughs> we not having that. All no. right, so you got some negative to say, right? Leave the room, fam. So my thing is, it's not, it's not like that. What you got to do is you got to, you have to care about that kid. And the one thing I notice about all the kids that work out with me is they know I care. That's something you can't fake. Because what happens is you have to tell them, look, I'm doing this for you. If you don't come and you don't play, you play. I don't play anymore. So what I want you to be able to do is be able to... The thing I like people do, my guys to do, is be comfortable being uncomfortable. Because you're going to be uncomfortable in the game. Because there's going to be defense. The coach is going to be saying things. So what you want to do is, I want to get you your pl to your place where you're comfortable being uncomfortable. And once that is, you're going to be good. And then once you do that, you want to be fine. And then you want to be able to get better you got to get better, because if you ain't better than you was yesterday, you might as well, mm -hmm. be, you might as well be them trees outside. You're just existing. You know what I'm That's saying? That's real. So I mean, it's just, I just love. I just, I'm in the, the training business to change lives, and what I mean by that is to save parents money for scholarships. And once I, if I can do it to change your life, then I did my job. Yeah, because uh. Who was this? Uh, Bogatisha said, I never trained with Jerry before because my parents couldn't afford it. But I promise you, my son will be training with him when he gets old enough. I bet you that. Wow. And then I, I, yeah. I mean, I've been doing it. The one thing I do, I'm very happy that I, I am proud of is I, I have 13 McDonald's All-Americans mm. in, in the time that I've been doing it like I'm right. talking about, i put years in with people you know what i mean and then you know i never there's guys that worked out with me maybe once or twice i don't consider those people my guys you know what i mean if you work a guy out once he's not your guy you know right what I mean? you know you work a guy out it's a years. job it's a job right yeah he's not your guy put years in with someone put years when you put years with someone, then that's your guy, like the Bria Hartleys of the world, the the Celeste the Celeste Taylors, the Sammy Prahalises, the Lance Stevensons, the Irv Walkers, the um the 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 you know, so many Tobias Harris, you know what I mean, Danielle Wilson, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? It, it's countless names that, and they're all Danny Green, you know, Mike James. It's just you know, I mean, if it yeah, wasn't for him the other day and people were nuts. And it's crazy. His little cousin is goes to my school. So he 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 found it interesting. Kid doesn't really talk to me. So I posted Mike James and he was like, Mr. Harding, you know, that's my cousin. And because of that, now me and this kid talk a little bit and have a little conversation. Right. Yeah, it's crazy. And now, go ahead. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You go. no. I'm gonna say, does the workout for girls and guys differ? All right, I'm gonna tell you the biggest thing: the difference between girls and and guys. Girls listen. Girls get better faster. I'm gonna tell you why. A girl, a girl is going to do what you say, cause that's just their nature. A boy has to fail first. Mm. Then he's going to listen. Mm. This is good. This is good. Yeah. Wow. I, because the most, the most McDonald's Americans I got are girls. They just listen. They get better fast. Listen, the first time I coached girls was this summer at the Mo Kirby's Memorial uh basketball game that they had. I was so open after I coached that game. I was talking about it for months. Like, 
the difference between girls and guys is like light years. You tell a girl to do something, they're going to do it the way you asked them. And I never experienced that until last summer. And I've been coaching for a very long time. Right. This is crazy. This, it's good that you yeah. said that. So. Yeah. No, and, but you'll get some boys that'll go hard too, though. I'm not saying all yeah, but Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, true. For the most part, girls listen. They just listen. They get it right away. They listen. Without giving away any secrets, some young kids is probably going to watch this video, right? Mm -hmm. What can they do to get themselves better? First, to get better in basketball is two things. It's just two things. You ready? Yes. Approach, attitude. Got to have the right approach. You have to have the right approach. Everybody don't have the right approach. Some people got the approach. A lot of kids love the culture of basketball. They don't love the game. Meaning the Instagram, <laughs> the bags. I'm with the gauchos. They gave me new sneakers. I got the hoodie. I got the EYBLs. I got this. They don't, because if they love the game, like they love, if a kid likes the game, like he loves his phone, we have a thousand All-Americans. Woo! Preach! Preach! That's so real. Mm -mm -mm. So now, you talk about uh, mentoring young guys, young trainers, right? How does that make you feel to help the new and up-and-coming trainers and still stay on your job at the same time, knowing yeah. that these guys are on your well, heels? Got, yeah, they're on my heels. I got, I don't, I'm not in competition with them. There you go. See, there you here's go. why I'm not, like, my favorite, one of my close friends, I got a couple good friend trainers. I got a guy named, these are my guys that I, I like. My staff, those are my guys, because they're, you know, Carson, Prentice, Pat, Matt, Tyrone, Debbie, you know, that's my staff. Outside of my staff, there's guys like that I like. I like Phil Handy. We're close. Phil is nice to me, super nice. I think Phil is, I like Drew Hanlon. Now, my buddies, my fraternity of buddies, I like the uh, Dalik Mango, uh, Humble Development, Justin's my guy, Mel Austin. Those are my guys. Like, if they ever call me and say, Jerry, what do I do in this situation? How do I? They're guys who call me out of state. How do they, how do they, how do they price? Some guys don't know how to price pros. You know what I mean? They don't realize that pros don't have, they don't have cash on them. So you, the first thing you want to do is know your pricing. Yes. How, the first thing you want to know when, you, when, you, when you're giving a pro a price is, number one, how long are you going to be working out with me? Number two, are we doing two a days? Number three, uh, how long are you going to be with me? Now you judge. Now you say, you know what? You don't want to get too greedy and you don't want to lowball yourself either right so you know it depends on i usually price guys according to their salary and the level that they are mm. that's that's what i do like if there's a guy in the g league i'm not gonna bang him in the head because he's still striving for greatness you know what i mean overseas guys i try to take care i try to give overseas guys like like high school prices. You know what I'm saying? So, because, you know, it's overseas. They got family, they got bills, and they got stuff like that. So, you know, that's what I try to do. I, I want to, I'm here to help those guys. I'm not here to be like, yo, man, you, you got to do it like me. I'm the man. I don't want, I don't, I, I'm not even on Instagram like that. So, you, you know, you had to teach me how to go live. So you and, know, and you got you got a lot of people watching you tonight, brother. So, so definitely you, doing a good job. So you know, um, it's not about me. It can't. That's be right. First of all, I'm too shy. 
but I, I love what I do. And then not only that, I'll tell you, I'll help these guys before I hurt them. I won't. And then another thing trainers don't realize, and even I realize, the one thing they got to start understanding is everybody's not going to train with you. You can't train everybody. Right now, if you t Glenn, you told me, yo, I got 100 kids for you tomorrow. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to be like, wait a minute. Oh, 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 I can't accommodate that. Hold on. You know what I mean? Give me 20. Let me give you the, somebody else the other 80. You know what I mean? You can't be greedy. Pigs get slaughtered. Mm. You know what I mean? And then me personally, a lot of people like to point finger at people. But if you're pointing fingers at people, you're pointing three at you. Did you know that? Facts. And then another Facts. thing, you know, you can't be greedy. My mom's taught me this a long time ago. God can't put nothing in your hands if it's always closed. You got to give to receive and you got to open to give. That's real. Wow, man. This is very powerful, man. I had a good friend tell me that the lack of teaching coming from coaches gave the rise to the trainer. Well, I wouldn't say that. I, I like coaches too. I can't say that. Because train the number one thing, the reason why I can't say that, I got to say okay. that. I can't say that because I can't give you a career. I can't. I can't give you a career. Coach, the coach can, not Jerry. I can enhance your career, but I can't give you a career. I think a lot of guys, you know what I mean? And another thing we as trainers, we can't do. We can't tell that kid, yo, don't go listen to your coach. You do this. Do no, 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 no. Because what we're doing is we're getting that kid in trouble. <laughs> that kid won't play. Exactly. We don't dictate playing time. No, we don't. We don't. So try to stay out of that. If the parents come to you and say, hey, his coach is jerking him, keep your mouth shut. That's not your concern. Mm. Mm. You know what I mean? I, I've told this to people. The less you say, the better off you are. That's real, man. You know what I mean? You can't, you can't, don't interfere with that coach. Because watch this. That coach may need you and say, hey, I want you to work the guys out. But if you going back talking bad about the coach, you cut your nose up to spite your face. That's right. Because I know early on, uh, who was that? Uh, the coach. Jeanette Jonathan's coach. Right? St. John the Baptist. Yes. Reached out to you, right? This is where the coach and the trainer work hand-in-hand. -hand. Right. Yes. So, yeah, just pointing out that. I saw that in the article, so, so definitely. So the difference is, man, the difference is this, man. You got to... You got to keep your ego intact, man. You can't, like, people say, yo, Jerry Powell, you the GOAT. You the, you the legend. No, nah, I'm not nobody. I'm not no GOAT, man. I'm just a guy who saw, had a vision. And I, and I told Charles Jones years ago, I said, listen, man, I'm glad I was able to provide a job for these you coming up and training that they're able to feed they they're able to, to sustain a family and make some money for themselves well how 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 would how would i look hating on that how would i look hating on the next trainer when god has put me in position and blessed me to work out two of the greatest players of our time lebron james and kevin durant so and and i, I worked out paul george drew holiday J reggie jackson mike james J jermaine o'neal one of my favorite customers took care of me. J.O. took care of me. These guys let me bring me into their homes. They trusted me. Paul George never put me in no hotel. He let me stay at his crib. Reggie Jackson, same thing. The Holiday Brothers, they 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 love me. You know what I mean? Because I was a, I'm a good dude, and I, and I and I care about them. I didn't let them go through the motions. You know what I mean? Look, this is for you, man. This ain't for me. This ain't about me. I ain't going to post them and make it seem like I made them. Them guys already made it. 
That's one thing trainers can't do. You can't say, I put that guy in the league. He already got drafted. How you put him in the league? <laughs> That's so real. That's so real. You yeah. can't say that. Paul George was number 10 pick before I even met him. The only thing, you got to understand, with pros, you can't get them better. You can only enhance. Mm. I did nothing for Kevin Durant. Me working out Kevin Durant, I got more out of it than he did. Mm. Because Kevin Durant is just that nice. Dedrick let me work out Kyrie before. <laughs> I told Dedrick straight up, there's nothing I can do with Kyrie. He does not need it. What are we, what am I doing, what am I doing here? It's crazy. Well, I don't know. If, have you ever heard of Game Over? Yes, yes. You heard, you heard of Game Over? Yes. Yeah, my guy Eric Hicks, our sponsor here. You know, uh, I, I know he's going to be beating me in the head like, yo, G, why didn't you offer him a trophy, man? But we definitely want to work that out, man. Make sure you get one of these, man. Thank you, man. For Thank sure. You. You, you put in the work for it. So we're going to have a little fun right now. Right? Yes. Uh, we like to do our top fives, right? So we're going to okay. start in Long Island. Know you from all of them, but you was raised in Long Island. Yes. In your eyes and what you've seen, top five players from Long Island. My top five? Yes. Okay. I'd have to go with at the point guard. A.J. Price. Not Billy Donovan? No, man. A.J. Price, a bad boy, man. Ooh! AJ, AJ, A.J. Price was a bad, bad boy. Yes, yes, definitely, definitely. Bad boy. I got to go with guys that was made it to the league and stuck it there. Billy, Billy A.J. Price, A.J. Price had... The criteria, the, the criteria is different in Jerry Powell's world. Yes, A.J. Price, A.J. Price... Man, listen, that kid was tough in high school. People feared him in high school. That guy made me a lot of money, man. Because he worked out with me. You got to remember, as a sophomore, he scored 13 straight points. He was the reason why they beat LeBron. Mm. He's tough, man. He's tough. That kid is tough. Mm. In high school, and... and, and he got the record in the, in the round ball classic. He had 15 and 15. He had 15 assists. In an all-star game? Yes. Which doesn't. Nobody passes in the all-star game. He had 15 <laughs> assists. That kid's a problem, man. And he had a killer instinct. He was a killer. Most kids Long Island is considered soft. Not him. Not a You're the first person that put him on your list. Yo, he's and I had a and I had a, a a lot of Long Island guys up here and girls. Listen, man, how could you not? He played first of all, the stuff that he went through. He broke his leg. He had a brain aneurysm. Mm. He still made it to the NBA and played seven years. Then in the backcourt with him, Mike James. <sighs> The most improved player I ever seen in my life. No doubt. Then I got to go with Wally Zobiak. Oh yes, another killer. Wally Zobiak, and I got to get a six man on there. You got to give me a six man because it's well. You only have four right now. You got one more. You got to. No, I got three. I got Mike James, AJ Price. Okay, you got three. You got, you got come on. Yeah, you got six, man. You got six, man. All right. Wally Zobiak, AJ Price, Mike James, Tobias Harris. Tobias is nice, man. Yes, yes. I, I definitely, I, I have no problem with that. To, to, Tobias is nice. And you. I got to get Wally on there because. Wally showed his ass in the Hensie Double A's. He scored 40 every game. They had You don't remember him being on the front cover of Sports Illustrated calling Wally World. Mm. Wally was nice, man. Wally was super nice. Then 
I got to bring, I can't forget Tom Gugliotta. Who can forget? Tom, Tom is another most improved. He went to Whitman. And coming yep. out of high school, if you'd have told me Tom Gugliotta was going to play in the pros and be a lottery pick, he was pick number eight. His junior year, he killed the ACC. He killed it. And my sixth man, the kid, probably the winning this kid on Long Island, is Danny Green. Danny Green had St. Mary's, the number one team the number one team in the country when he was a senior. And he played center. Hmm. I seen him. I never knew that. I seen him guard Tyson Chandler, hold, his, hold him in check. They beat the Mingas. That's how they become number one team in the country. Wow. And he had role players around him. Danny's tough, man. That's my, that's my, that's my five. Those guys are good, man. And, I, and there's a lot of good Long Island players. Don't get me wrong. No, no, yeah, because I, I want to say, like, currently. Who yeah. are some of the guys out there currently? You know what I mean? I because mean, I know there was a big a big argument about, uh, not argument, but issue with uh, Jordan Rowley not making the McDonald's All-American team. But his, his I, I mean, Jordan is good, but Jordan wasn't on that stage like he should have been. You got to be, first of all, I'm not saying Jordan is not good. Jordan has to when you are when you a star, you got to be in a star environment. You can't be a star, right, and be at Adventureland when you want to be when you supposed to be at Great Adventure. Right, right. Adventureland is a little carnival spot on Long Island. I don't know if you ever been there. It's like it's small. It's got a lot of rides, a lot of little rides. You can walk from one end to the other in twenty minutes. You know what I mean? It ain't like Great Adventure. You know, that's why right. I'm, I'm not saying Jordan Riley's not good. He's good. But to get nominated, you got to bust a lot of guys. You can't do it once. You can't do it once. See, when you're on that, when you're considered one of the nice kids in country, you got to kill the other nice guys. You have to. Just like I tell parents, parents be saying, I want my kid to play Division One. You got to keep him in a Division One environment to, just to get to gauge, to see if he's even Division One. Right. You can't say he's Division One and he's never played on the court with nine Division One players. So true. You got to be in a Division One environment. That's all. Wow. And, and, so. And, go ahead. No, no. I, you, you, I'll let you continue if you have some more to say. No, no. Yeah. So now... We're going to move into the city because you're all from home. Yes. Top five New York City basketball players ever. You only get five. Damn. I got to go with this. This, I, this is where the pressure starts. Yeah. This is where the pressure starts right here. I got to go with what's his name? I got to I gotta go. I got to go. First guy I ain't gonna even lie to you, man. That Kenny Anderson dude is that stick Mr. Chips. Kenny Anderson. Kenny Anderson might be the greatest high school player I've ever seen in my life. In high school. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Ah. Um Hold on. Any and his first when he's a freshman, he didn't start. No, he came off the bench and averaged twenty four a game. In two quarters, I know. And look, I'm gonna tell you this. I'm gonna tell you this, which people don't know. My point guard, Dwayne Tiny Martin. Not saying he was on the same level with Kenny Anderson, but when we played him in the city championship, I mean, up at Glen Falls, when we beat them, Tiny held his own. And you know, I see. You know, a lot of people know about Tiny, the coach. And a lot of people don't really know about Tiny, the ball player. Tiny, nice. Respect. I remember Tiny. Tiny could play. Tiny could play. I and a lot of people. He wasn't Kenny like, Anderson. I'm not saying that. No, 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 Kim, no, no. We was praying. Know. We was praying that Jack Curry keep him out the whole first quarter so we can run up the score on the ass. Yo, Tiny. Tiny's a hell of a coach. Yes. No, no. I got to be around him. Like, 
I, 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 I coached one of his AAU teams for one summer just to have fun, just to get, just to, just to be, see what it's like to be in the city. I would mm -hmm. go out to his gym and just help him out. I remember that year. I used to come. I, I remember that year. Yeah. He can coach his ass off. Mm -hmm. He blew my mind. He can coach. He can coach. So all right, so let's, let's get back to your top five. You got you got chips number one. I got to go with uh, I like I like Jamal Mashburn too. Now you oh, baby fat. He was just imagine if yeah. if Jamal Mashburn body was structured a little bit, even lasted a little longer. Jesus. That kid was nice. I think uh, I think Jamal Mashburn, Jamal Mashburn was so good that he made pickup run look boring. <laughs> I've seen him play pickup. He scores within the flow of offense. He's not going to take a bad shot. He's not going to take a bad shot. So he's the most disciplined offensive player I've ever seen in my life. Disciplined. He's just not yeah. that. It, man, it's so it's so many, man. Oh my God, man, you got me. That's a tough one, man. Why you can't tell me who I like? That's what I said. This is this is who you like. This is I can't I can't be the, the gauge on this. It's why I always ask people. Now give me is, your top five. I, Everybody's top five is different. This is who I saw. You know what I mean? I can, we all know Kareem is the truth. I never saw Kareem, but I take everyone's word for it. You know what I mean? Yes. But I want to tell you who I saw, who I witnessed. Oh, man. Yo. Oh, this, I, this, 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 this may help you all a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, there's so many good guards I like. Yeah, that's good. Oh my God! Oh. You never saw Derek Chivas play Boo Harvey. Yes, I seen them play. I like Derek Chivas. I have to go with uh, I have to go with Rod. Rod was nice. Rod Strickland, he's on everyone's list. Rod Strickland, and even though Rod Strickland is on everyone's top five, I can't except the old school guys like Mel Davis. And those guys, and Rolando Blackman, they named some other guys. But for, like, our generation, everyone named Ross Strickland. I have to go with, I hate to say this, but I have to. I seen him kill, I seen him come to Long Island and kill Wine Dance. And Wine Dance was, he, and Wine Dance was triple teaming. Lloyd Daniels is nice, man. <laughs> Yo, that's another dude. Smoke crack, got shot, still made it to the league. Yes, I got to go with Lloyd because of the circumstances that he went through to get there. I know they were, I know people are like, yo, but, you know, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and then, yeah, I, I, I seen, man. Uh, uh, so while you think about your last one, right? Mm -hmm. I put up a post with Lamar Odom, Carm Carmelo Anthony, and Lloyd Daniels. And dudes was like, yo, this is not fair. How can you put Lloyd? I said, yo, fam, I seen all of them play. I'm telling you right now. I, I told Lloyd before he got shot. I'm talking about I shared 47, me and three other guys. Left hand, right. I I've never seen anyone shoot a jump shot who was right handed and shot it with their left hand. Yeah, not from three, and we didn't even have three pointers back then. I have, to and I never saw two guys hold one person and slide up and down the full court. I've never seen that. I've never seen two people. I've seen them trap, but I've never seen two people hold one person for the whole game. Lloyd Daniels. Lloyd Daniels. What people don't realize, 
He knows how to play. He knows how to play. And salute. Text me every morning. Salute. I got to have him back for sure. You get one more, Jared. Ah, man. I got to go with Lamar Odom. He's probably the most talented dude I've probably ever seen in my life. He could play the one, the two, the three, the four, the five. He could do everything. And he know he's another one that know how to play. And he's not selfish. Lamar Odom will give you 30 on 12 shots. You know, he's one of the, another reason why I started this show, because I saw him on Drink Champs. And my friends kept telling me for a couple of years, yo, you need to do a basketball show. And But it wasn't until I saw Lamar on Drink Champs. And I'm not talking about the Delta stuff that they do. The fact that they didn't talk about why we know Lamar. The fact we know Lamar because he was a great basketball player. And he never got a chance to say that. So I wanted to always give the platform for God to come and feel safe to tell a story and not worry about the scandals or the quote-unquote negative press that has been laid out there about them. That ain't got nothing to do with their talent. Thank you. Thank you. You know what I mean? Everybody makes mistakes. I mean, yep. we just can't dwell on them. Nah. Uh, another thing before you go, Jerry, <laughs> I like to, I know you saw me promote this at the beginning. Uh, Laura Milley. Right. She's the Christ the King great. She put in the Christ the King team, New York City. She went to Arizona State. Her book is called The Psyche of an Injured Athlete. She was the first uh, Mr. and Mrs. Basketball of New York City, 1989, of the state. Sorry about that. Right. And she just wrote her first book. Dope. And when I hear, you know, when I talk to a lot of guys, I went through an injury myself. Other guys who had injuries and it became a traumatic experience for them and didn't know how to bounce back. So hopefully this book will be able to help a lot of people out there. Yes. Yeah. Go. Any 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 last words you would like to give the audience before you get out of here? I just want everybody to um stay safe and I want to mention another buddy of mine that we just lost. Uh Tom Kachowski. I really miss him. I miss talking to him and and uh people don't know that guy we lost a great one cuz I used to see Tom in the hood with the with the yes. with, with all of us and he wasn't trying <laughs> to go nowhere and 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 he his his memory is incredible. Yes. And and and, and he can just he can he can measure your game out and he and the one thing I like about Tom Kunchowski, he never had not one bad thing to say about no one. His whole no. entire life. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he he was honest, and he's going to be missed. He's probably the best, one of the best talent evaluators I ever seen. He he had a gift. He definitely had a gift. Great he, man, changed my life. Changed my life. Gave me the opportunity to go to MCI, uh, be the first guy from New York to go there uh, during my senior year. And I, I don't know what life would have been like if I didn't have that opportunity. So he's always been an important person in my life, and I will always honor him. So definitely yes. salute Tom Kachowski. Yes, yes. And we love yes. Donald Donaldson as well, PSL. Yes. I, 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 I didn't know him, but I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I, didn't, I, I just never met him. But I'm sorry. Right. You know, I'm sorry for you know, whoever he's related to for their loss and stuff like that. No doubt. Um, before you leave, right? Yeah. What we like to do on Basketball Heads, Show our guys some love and our girls, our women. So what I'm going to do is show you the artwork, right? So we have a resident artist, Jamel Powell. Wow. Right? So that let was you dope. see this. Yo, his last name is Powell, too? Yes, his last name is Powell. Spelled the same way. Wow. He's nice. Yeah. So this is you chilling, sitting down, and then 
Y'all have a picture that I posted. Yo, that's dope, man. That's nice. So this is what we like to do for our basketball heads that come on, you know, and give them something to always remember that they was on Basketball Heads Live. Man. Yeah, I appreciate you having me, man. It was good, man. It was good. No I appreciate, doubt. I appreciate you. Thank you a lot, man. And, and somebody nominated you, so you get to nominate someone. You don't have to do it on air now, but you can hit me up and be like, yo, G, they need to be on the show. Definitely. I'll definitely do that, for sure. Appreciate you, my brother. Thank, Thank you, you again. All right. Wow. Jerry Powell. This is awesome. Right? We get to talk basketball. Some of New York City. Long Island. New York greats. He's been putting it down for years. So we're going to keep supporting him and what he's doing. Thank you for joining Basketball Heads Live. Don't forget, make sure you cop that Psyche of the Injured Athlete by Dr. Laura Milley. This is Glenn Poo Hardy signing off. Basketball Heads Live. We are the fishy home for New York City basketball. Peace.